Everybody, I'm Joey and I'm Alex and today we are reviewing let's call the exorcist mm -hmm. which is very odd we would probably not have picked this game or this title but it's extremely tongue-in-cheek mm -hmm. I mean it's it's a really just look at the cover yeah yeah so it's first of all it's social deduction you know what before we get into that let's go exactly into how it's mm -hmm. played Okay, so this is how you play Let's Call the Exorcist. Right now we're set up for a four player game. This is social deduction. And all the number of roles and everything, that varies depending on how many players. Now, like I said, we're playing a four player game right here, which means there are gonna be three innocent and one possessed. And the cards, we have 10 mischief and blessings, four holy artifacts, and two cursed artifacts. So these are the roles right here. So the innocent, there are three innocent, a one possessed, like I said, and this game is played in a series of rounds. Now, a round is won by either team, either innocent or possessed. Possessed wins if two cursed artifacts are revealed. Well, all the cursed artifacts, but in the four player game, there are only two. And the innocent wins if all the holy artifacts are revealed. And in this situation, there are four. So these are shuffled up. Just like this, and all the rolls are handed out. And everyone looks at their roll. Okay, so I happen to be possessed over here. Then all the cards are handed out to where they're equal number four for each person. And everybody's gonna look at their cards. So right now I look at these secretly and I see I've got one holy artifact. Since I'm possessed, I don't want this one to be revealed. Okay, so then they're gonna shuffle their cards and place their four cards back in front of them. You're gonna know what cards you have, but you're not gonna know their location. And then you can share knowledge with people telling the truth or not. Like for instance, I might say, I might say, okay guys, I've got a couple of cursed artifacts here, so I, you probably shouldn't flip them over, or I've got a cursed artifact. That way they don't end up flipping over a holy artifact. So the first player goes, selects one person and their card, and say I'm gonna choose right here. Holy Artifact, perfect. So that right here, if this is the first Holy Artifact revealed this round, the Seeker must select another player to gain two points. Oh, that's nice, so we're gonna take, so they will select me because they trust me. And that will make me three because everyone starts off with one point at the beginning of the game. Now this person was the chosen one and now they are the Seeker. They have to choose somebody else to flip over a card. So they're gonna go ahead and choose me. Flip it over and the mischief cards, the seeker of the chosen swap all of their unrevealed cards and then shuffle them. So here we go. We're gonna swap them and put them back. So now no one knows what you have. So it is my turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose over here. Ooh, another mischief. Flip this face down and shuffle it back into the Chosen's unrevealed cards. The Seeker must select a new Chosen and reveal one of their cards. So shuffle this back in here, and instead I will choose over here. What do we got here? Ooh, another Holy Artifact. So now that is two Holy Artifacts. What does this do? If this is the first Holy Artifact, it's not, so we don't worry about that. And this one can only choose the person that hasn't been chosen yet, because there are three cards here, three, three, over here four, so he's got to choose one right here. The seeker is seeker again next turn, and they must select a different chosen. So next turn, this guy's going to be seeker again. So, so now because there are the same number of cards revealed as there are players, this draw comes to a close. So nobody's won yet because there have not been four holy artifacts uncovered or two cursed. So place these aside, so now you know. You're going to then take these, all put them back together, shuffle them up, and then you are going to deal them out again. And you're going to, everyone's going to look at their cards. Right here. Ooh, two cursed artifacts. That's nice. All right, and then place them in front of them. Again, shuffle them up. 
So right here is the chosen. So for example, right now, I might say, hey, I've got several holy artifacts here. You might as well flip this over. They reach over, they flip it over. Cursed artifact. And now this says the chosen may peek in another player's role. So I can look. And there we go. Now I am halfway to winning. Then I get to choose somebody. And you keep going until two cursed artifacts are revealed or four holy artifacts. And when that happens, so say two of these are revealed, I then flip over that I'm possessed. I have won this. So I then get two points right over here. And then this round is over. You check to see if anyone has seven points. And if they do, they have won the game. And if not, you then gather up all the cards again. And then you also gather up all the rolls again. Shuffle them up. And you start a new round with new rolls. So someone different is the possessed this time. And you keep going until someone has seven points. And that is the end of the game. So that is pretty much in the nutshell. That is not all the rules, but that is an overview of how to play. Let's call the exorcist. So let's send it back and see what we thought about it. Okay, so that is Let's Call the Exorcist, or at yep. least how it's played. Yep. Now, component-wise, it's they, fine. Oh, they're good. You know, they all the things do what they're supposed to do. The little tokens you get for your scoring, your cards, they're all great. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. This is very, it's a very simple, simple game. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's simple to teach. The components are easy with it. I mean, the point markers are fine, the little yeah. tokens. So, component-wise, it's yep. fine. Oh, good. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a just a quick game. It's not, you know, it's not going to be like the main feature of your night game. Just this is a good, quick filler game. And I mean, the big thing is with the name on this, people might, you know, shy away from it. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's a very simple game, mm -hmm. but it's like I was playing this game with my nephew mm. and my sister walked in. She's like, what are you guys playing? Like, perfect. <laughs> perfect. She walks in here and Andrew's like, we're playing Let's Call the Exorcist. Yes. I'm like, Uncle of the year right there. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. But anyway, no, but it's a very simple game. Mm -hmm. It's social deduction. The whole yes. thing is tongue in cheek, like I said. Yes. And it's, even if you don't like social deduction, it's almost like you mix a social deduction game with skulls. For you mm -hmm. that have played skulls, the game with the coasters. Yes. That's kind of what it's like because you can talk about what's in front of you, mm -hmm. but you can be lying too. Yeah, I am not a huge fan of social deductions. I don't like games that I have to lie in. That's just... I don't like that at all, but I didn't mind this because it, the good thing was that if I was the uh, the poltergeist person, right, I might have my role switched, and so then I'm playing the game with I don't actually know if I'm the bad person or the good person, so I can just kind of be either way, and it's fine. I did really like that 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 twist of the social deduction right there. That was so good, and for people like me who don't like social deduc deduction, that was perfect. You mean when you can when someone can switch your role, yes. and you don't know, yeah. Like you've got the cards that give you different things that you're going to switch out and stuff. Right. That happened several times, and it was it was a relief when my role was switched because I'm like, good. Now I don't know what I'm doing, so it's fine. I can just play it as is. So it's, I like that a lot. Yeah. That, that's really neat too. And the big thing is, I think that differentiates this from a lot of social deduction is yeah. the fact that your roles change every round. Yes. So yes. you can be innocent, or you you know you, your role at the end of the round will change. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the points. Yes. So it's also fun because other, some social deduction games drag because the whole time you're thinking, okay, I think that guy is the werewolf or I think this, and you're trying to figure out the same puzzle every time. Mm -hmm. This is faster yes. because you're trying to figure out and you're like, what? Oh, you were, you were innocent? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Next round. Yeah. And you keep going, yeah. going, going. And it's not one team wins. It's one person wins yeah. with the points. Yes. And that's, that's a neat thing about this You game. are correct. That's a really good way of saying it too because every round it's a different analyzing everybody differently because everything's changing. It was great. Right. And I liked also how like the, the, the goals would be for you have to get the holy objects or you have to get the cursed objects. That was great too because it just adds that extra extra little motivation to the game too. And you kind of get to see who is winning towards you in the yes. game. And that's it's, it's really fun. It's almost one of those, if you want to get someone into social deduction, this is a very simple, quick way. Yeah. I mean, we played it at the 
kitchen table. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know, very absolutely. Quick. Yes. So it's a very quick game. It's yeah. um, and it also helps you get a read on people, even if you don't like social deduction. It might be one to check out. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, don't let. I'm not a huge social deduction fan. I highly recommend this game. Great yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. okay, what's your number on it? My number is seven. Seven. Had to check. That's exactly my number. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't remember. Because again, it's it's not earth shattering, mm -mm. but it's actually it's a fun game to play. And it's a, like I said, it's a, just a quick game that you can play. You can play multiple times at night and have a great time enjoying it too. Yeah. Yeah. So and the cards are funny. Oh yes. Yeah. That it, is the best great. thing about yeah. this. Yeah. Like you said, it is super tongue in cheek. So it's great. Yeah. So yeah. it's good. Okay. So that is let's call the exorcist. <laughs> Mm. And I gave it a seven. So, yep. so all right. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks. Bye. Bye.